I've always been a really loyal person. I'm not a mercenary type person that wants to go here and go there and unsettle their family and keep looking for things. I like setting down roots. I like feeling like it's a place of home. I like comfort. Knowing where to go back and, and feeling like it's uh, a sense of belonging, that, that's kind of important to me. I never used to get up early in the morning either, but I think as I'm, I've gotten older, I've realized I'm more productive in the morning, so I don't mind getting up, maybe going to bed a bit earlier and then getting up a bit earlier, but no, I, I mean, honestly, I could go one ferry later if I wanted to, but nowadays we have such a nice facility, I want to be there early, I want to get going, you know. Hello, good morning. Thank you. We might actually make the early boat, see? I sold my second art piece ever to a family that lives here on the island. I had my art piece packed and drove over, took the ferry over here. It was a beautiful day. That family lives in the bay where we ended up uh, building our house too. It was like so magical. After, the, after selling that, that art piece, I came home and I was like, we gotta look at uh, Bainbridge Island. The process of, of building your house is, uh, is a unique one. <laughs> I don't want to say it like that. But was it worth it? Yeah, totally. Um, especially, again, in this place. Um, we see ourselves staying here for quite a long time. and Every day, you feel blessed to be living in a place like this. So This is home for us. And even whatever, whatever my second chapter will be, um, hopefully we'll, it, it'll be here, because it, it would be a shame if we had to leave this beautiful place. I feel like this is like my threshold where I compress and decompress, you know? It's like, ferry ride is a perfect symbol of that. When you're going towards the city in the morning, is that's, that's my time when I'm going to go to work and going to, let's get stuff done and wired. And so like, you're looking at life, you're looking at the city, right? You're looking at the hustle and bustle. That definitely like, it works that way. And then when I'm the other way, going back to, to our home, you're looking at the Cascades, you're looking at mountains, you're looking at nature and, and serenity. And so it kind of works both ways. It kind of sets the tone for, for my day, either going towards the city and going to work or, or going home and going to relax. Like you can see my art, I love geometry, I love architecture. So like when you get to go and ride a ferry towards architecture like this, the skyline, and these two worlds like melting together is pretty cool. I'm usually first, even uh, definitely today first for sure. But even um, I'm gonna take the other ferry. Usually I think uh, Andrew gets here around like eight ten, so I beat him by a couple minutes. Otherwise I'd have to start taking the early one. <laughs> just damn it. Can you just sleep five more minutes so I can keep taking the other ferry? It's awesome that how close the facility is to the field. You can literally be eating breakfast or be you're in a gym and you look out here and you're, you, you know you're part of a soccer club. Oh, wow. All right, how you feeling today? So good. As a goalkeeper, uh, you're, you're under a lot of pressure a lot of stress and you want to do everything really well. There's not much room for error. Sometimes that can get tough. And so um, for us, I'm very fortunate that as a family, we've created an oasis over here on Bainbridge Island feel so far away from stress. And so all these things uh, take me so far away from the pressure that I feel as a goalkeeper.
this means you may be restricted from visiting WSF. Mobley, come on. Hey, buddy. This is Mobley and Maggie. And Chloe's coming as well. And here's the queen in the house. Look, Chloe. Honestly, I've always been like an introvert and I've always been thinking about things. But when you can think about things and you're out in nature, for some weird reason, it's just, it's, it's much nicer. It's much more enjoyable. And I think it tends to be more positive thoughts <laughs> that come out of it. So, especially when you have, you know, things are not going well, you're under stress at work, or uh, you have a bad performance. I remember growing up in Switzerland and uh, my parents they used to take us, you know, hiking in the Alps. And I felt like as a kid, there was always a chore. It was like, oh no, I don't want to go, you know? And then obviously once we moved and uh, I got a little bit older, I think you start reminiscing about those times. Oh, it was kind of cool actually. And then now the more, the older I've gotten, the more I think I've been drawn to nature again. It's kind of come full circle a little bit. I think it puts things in perspective because I think sometimes you, or I, I can, you know, stress about things that in the grand scheme of things are not that relevant, you know? Um, and, and when you're out here in nature and you see all, all of this around you, uh, I think that puts things in perspective and just lets you, allows you to relax again, breathe a little bit, um, enjoy what you have, um, how blessed you are. I've always liked the look of when you see an artist stand in front of their canvas and all their clothes are just full of splatters and things like that. I feel like it's almost like their identity, you know? Um, but uh, recently I, I figured, I had this image in my head, I was, you know, someone would be behind me and I'm spraying this huge mural and that would be me standing there, but what, what if I was still the, the goalkeeper or the soccer player, right? And so I was like, I should start wearing soccer kits because it's still, it's part of me. It's part of my identity. It's the soccer player that that also paints, right? And uh, and ultimately, I think it'd be really cool in the end. Maybe after a few years, when it's all tagged up and covered in, in colors, um, maybe there's a, there's space for it to to go to an auction and, and, or a charity and raise some funds. Uh, as an artist, you put your heart and soul and a piece of you onto the canvas, and and that's still me as a goalkeeper. I would say the closer to game, the less time I'm in here, I spend in here. Um, off days, as much as I can. I mean, sometimes I'm in here for five, six hours straight. The stresses of, of, of my job, um, especially I think as a goalkeeper, you, you dwell on things, you can't, you don't get another chance to fix a mistake. You just had one thing and it was a big error and that was it and the team paid for it. And uh, it can be brutal, especially as an introvert too to have to deal with those thoughts. Um, goalkeeping, nothing beautiful happens out of a mistake. And in art, you can make a mistake and then you're like, huh. Now you look at it something in a different way and then you can approach it differently and, and now maybe you can actually learn something. So that's kind of liberating, um, having that balance and that contrast to my, my work on, on the field. I think I've realized over the past few years there were spells where um, I was struggling mentally a little bit. It all kind of started closing in a bit and, and that's when you realize that you know you have to be careful because as men in particular I think we're always taught to just be like oh toughen it out and, and you'll be fine don't worry about it. Again I think the number one thing is you have to recognize it first so that you then can say hey Maybe I do focus a little bit more on myself. And so that realization has been good for me. Um, it's always a work in progress. You always gotta keep tabs on those things. And ultimately you have to feel what you're feeling and acknowledge that first. I think that's the most important. 
I think we see a great future, um, obviously, here on this island again, um, keep keeping this tranquility and this oasis going. And, uh, and then for me to hopefully find my next chapter um, on, the, on the mainland with, with, with art in Seattle.